Uh, I'll talk about uh, uh, implementing a qubit using Joseon junctions, just a single qubit. Uh, I'll tell a, a bit more uh, about uh, implementing uh, quantum gates with that kind of qubit or qubits. But uh, the basic goal is to make just one qubit. And uh, even before that, uh, I'll try to focus uh, on making some uh, physical devices uh, that would be a part of the qubit. Uh, th uh, the goal is uh, to do error correction uh, at the physical level so that uh, we don't have to uh, uh, have uh, extra complexity at the logical level. Uh, so the qubit uh, is supposed to be protected uh, from unwanted interactions, meaning that all unwanted interactions are exponentially suppressed. And uh, uh, I also want to do this uh, qubit uh, using electrical devices so that uh, uh, quantum operations can be implemented uh, by commuting electric circuits. Uh, that would be nice because we know how to do that. Um, here are some uh, simple elements that I used uh, in superconducting electronics. Uh, uh, this is a capacitor, uh, the schematic for the capacitor, and this is uh, the schematic for a Joseon junction. Uh, the Joseon junction is characterized by two parameters, uh, J and C. This is uh, the Joseon current, the maximum uh, superconducting current that can flow through the Joseon junction. Uh, and uh, all the circuits uh, I will be talking about operate at very low temperature, uh, a few millikelvin, uh, so that uh, normal excitations in, uh, in the superconductor are totally suppressed. And uh, the only relevant degrees of freedom are in the Joseon junctions and uh, in the capacitors. There is one more element uh, we would like to have. That's an inductor. Surprisingly, uh, an, in, an, an inductor is uh, rather difficult to implement uh, in superconducting electronics, and uh, I'll discuss uh, that later. An inductor can be implemented a, a, as a chain of Joseon junctions. Each Joseon junction is characterized by this parameter J, the Joseon energy. Uh, and it uh, must be greater than uh, the Coulomb energy, E squared over C, where C is the capacitance. Uh, in this regime, uh, uh, we can neglect uh, the Coulomb blockade, and uh, the current flows uh, uh, through this circuit. Uh, so this chain is superconducting. Uh, in other words, uh, when uh, the Coulomb blockade can be neglected, we can also neglect uh, phase slips uh, in this chain. We can uh, assume that uh, the phase change across each junction is small, it's much smaller than 2 pi, and uh, the phase changes continuously from one end to the other end. That's why we need many junctions, because uh, if uh, the phase changes uh, by a large amount on each junction, uh, there is a high uh, chance of, of, of a phase slip. And uh, the effective inductance uh, is proportional to the number of junctions uh, and inversely proportional to the Joseon current of uh, each individual junction. Uh, this is one uh, way to implement an inductor. Uh, I'll describe uh, an alternative uh, using dirty superconductors or amorphous superconductors. And uh, another element uh, that uh, would be very useful is a switch. Uh, it uh, sounds simple, but uh, it's not actually trivial. How do we uh, uh, connect or disconnect a, a superconducting circuit? Here is an implementation uh, that uh, has been demonstrated uh, in an experiment by Heavyland uh, seven years ago. Uh, this switch is actually a chain of squids, uh, supercondu uh, superconducting quantum interferometer device. Each loop here uh, is a squid. It consists of two uh, Joseon junctions in parallel, uh, and one can uh, run some magnetic flux uh, through each loop. Uh, basically, one can apply uh, homogeneous magnetic field to the whole device. Uh, 
when the flux is approximately equal to pi, the adjacent currents uh, in the two arms of this interferometer interfere destructively and uh, the effective Josephson current vanishes uh, or becomes very small if uh, this flux is not exactly pi. In this regime, quantum fluctuations or the column energy becomes important and uh, the whole chain goes into an insulating state. Uh, that's how um, uh, heavy lens switch works. Uh, again, uh, in, in this talk, I'll describe an alternative implementation of a switch that doesn't require a long chain of Joe's injunctions, but uh, it has uh, its own advantages and disadvantages. Uh, let me describe um, more, uh, more exotic elements or actually uh, small circuits that can be used to implement uh, qubits and other interesting devices. Uh, this uh, rhombus of four joes and junctions uh, was proposed by Dussau Vidal uh, and Eofi and Fegelman. Uh, and it, it operates as follows. Uh, we have uh, four joes and junctions and uh, magnetic uh, flux pi going through the loop. In, in this loop, uh, this loop can be in two states. Uh, in one state, uh, the current goes this way, and in the other state, the current goes that way. Uh, so, uh, I don't know. Uh, we can uh, also con control the current uh, by applying external superconducting phases. We can fix uh, the phases phi 1 and phi 2 uh, on the two sides of the junction. Uh, the energy of this device will be some function of phi 1 and phi 2. It turns out that uh, when the uh, flux uh, going through the loop is exactly pi, uh, the energy is proportional to cosine 2 phi. Uh, in comparison, for a single Joseon junction, uh, the energy is proportional to cosine of phi. And this difference is extremely important because uh, the, uh, the function cosine of 2 phi has two energy minima. And uh, as, uh, as, as is usual, uh, phi varies from 0 to 2 pi. This is the superconducting phase uh, across the whole device. Phi, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't write it. Phi equals uh, phi 2 minus phi 1. Uh, so uh, the energy dependence has two minima, and uh, one minimum can represent uh, a logical zero, and the other minimum can represent a logical one. And one can also construct superpositions of uh, zero and one. Uh, however, in the real device, it will be some error term, uh, some uh, function uh, g of phi uh, that is periodic with period 2 pi rather than pi. And uh, this error term will uh, give different energies to state 0 and state 1. So uh, in, in this case, uh, the qubit will not be ideal. And if this energy difference between the two states uh, depend, uh, depends on the, on the environment, uh, then uh, the qubit will decohere. Uh, we want to protect the qubit uh, f uh, from such errors. And uh, for this purpose, uh, Dussault and Vidal proposed uh, making a chain of those rhombi. And uh, Eofin Fiegelmann proposed uh, making a two-dimensional array. Uh, let me describe uh, uh, how the chain works, it's uh, simpler, uh, the uh, two-dimensional array would be more stable. In a chain, each rhombus can be uh, in two logical states, zero and one. And uh, uh, if we only fix uh, the phase difference across the whole device, that phase difference uh, can be uh, zero or pi. If we divide that by pi, it's uh, 0, 1 also. So uh, a logical 0 can be represented uh, by any combination of zeros and 1s with an even number of 1s. Uh, 
each one uh, corresponds to switching, uh, to changing the phase by pi, modulo two pi. So this is uh, some superposition of uh, even number of ones. Uh, now uh, we need to include quantum fluctuations. Uh, suppose the phase at each uh, island here, at each intermediate point, can flip by pi, which means uh, that uh, zero, zero can change to one, one. A phase flip uh, at this point uh, flips uh, uh, the bit on the left and the bit on the right. So um, due to uh, these phase flips, uh, the ground state will be the uniform superposition of all combinations of even number of ones. And uh, the logical one is uh, the uniform combination of odd uh, uh, vectors. These are uh, two logical states and uh, they are protected against uh, phase errors. The protection is, is due to uh, the spin flips. Uh, if we average uh, the error term uh, over uh, uh, such a state, we'll get a suppression of the error term. The error term is suppressed uh, uh, is uh, J1 over T, where T is the tunneling amplitude, the flip amplitude, raised to the power N minus one, where N is the number of junctions in, in the chain. So uh, as N goes to infinity, the protection against uh, phase errors becomes exponential. Of course, uh, we must pay for that uh, by increasing the effective uh, Joseon parameter of the whole chain. The amplitude of this uh, function for the whole chain will be smaller than uh, the amplitude uh, for a single junction, and the difference uh, is by factor of n. So uh, we increase the uh, operating energy or operating frequency of our device and gain uh, uh, protection uh, from errors. The gain is exponential and uh, the cost is only polynomial. That's uh, the general idea. Um, looking at, at, at the, that scheme, uh, one might think that uh, it is necessary to have many degrees of freedom. In fact, uh, this, uh, the chain of uh, Rombi looks like an error correcting code and of course to achieve uh, high protection uh, one needs many uh, physical qubits to encode a single logical qubit. But uh, in fact, there is an alternative. Uh, one can use uh, a single continuous degree of freedom uh, to encode a qubit. And uh, that alternative uh, was explored in, in that paper by uh, Gottesman, Preskill, and myself. Uh, and uh, the main idea of the present work is that a sufficiently large uh, superconducting inductor can be used to implement uh, that idea uh, of uh, an oscillator code. Now, uh, let me describe uh, how basic elements uh, of a superconducting uh, circuit, uh, circuit work and uh, uh, why we need large inductors. Uh, I'll, I'll be using these units. Uh, the Planck constant is one and uh, the uh, charge of a Cooper pair is one. In uh, this unit, uh, the resistance uh, unit is this, which is about one kilo ohm. And uh, so six kilo ohm is uh, just two pi in the dimensional units. Um, uh, let's consider uh, a harmonic oscillator uh, or uh, an LC, LC circuit. It consists of an inductor and a capacitor, and the Hamiltonian is here. Um, one uh, may attach a Joseon junction to probe the circuit, but uh, uh, the Joseon junction is not included in the Hamiltonian. Uh, let's consider the ground state of the circuit. This is just a harmonic oscillator, and uh, it is characterized uh, by uh, phi squared average, which is given uh, by this expression. Uh, the square root of L over C is the characteristic impedance of uh, the LC circuit at a frequency of about uh, the resonance frequency. Uh, now, if we want to probe 
uh, the uh, circuit uh, by a Josephson junction, the relevant quantity is cosine phi because uh, the Josephson current is pro uh, the Josephson energy is proportional to cosine phi, and the, uh, the Josephson current is proportional to the sine of phi. So, if we average uh, the Josephson energy, uh, we get an exponential small value. Uh, the reason is that uh, the phase across the inductor fluctuates uh, by uh, many units of 2 pi. And uh, uh, cosine phi is uh, an oscillating function. It uh, averages out very easily. Uh, so this is the main idea. Uh, by having a large inductor, one can allow phase fluctuations by many units of 2 pi. And uh, the code I'm going to propose uh, will use uh, this degree of freedom, that in an inductor we can have uh, phase change by, uh, not just by uh, a quantity between zero and pi, but uh, by uh, any real number. Uh, let me now discuss uh, an implementation of a, su a superconducting inductor. Uh, a naive idea is to make a coil. Of course, uh, that's how uh, inductors are usually made. Uh, if one uh, thinks a moment about this idea, one can see that uh, it, it doesn't work. Uh, indeed, uh, we're interested in this uh, quantity, uh, which is uh, the impedance of the circuit. And uh, we want it to be large in, in quantum units. However, if we make uh, a single loop a wire, uh, that loop will have uh, in, uh, some inductance and some capacitance. And the characteristic impedance of a wire loop is uh, the impedance of the vacuum, uh, which is uh, about 400 ohms. In any case, it's uh, much smaller than uh, the number we need. It's uh, smaller by the factor of uh, 1 over 137, the fine structure constant. And uh, to overcome uh, this factor, one would need to make many loops, maybe hundreds of loops. Uh, that's completely unrealistic uh, uh, on a chip, uh, uh, which must be, uh, uh, the, the whole device must not be greater than uh, a few uh, microns uh, large. Otherwise, uh, there'll be some unwanted effects that will kill uh, all interesting uh, things in the device. And an alternative is to use a chain of JSON junctions. Uh, this chain must be uh, sufficiently long, uh, and it, it may, uh, may contain a, a hundred of JSON junctions. Uh, in contrast to that, uh, this proposal is realistic. One can actually make long chains of JSON junctions in small volume. Uh, however, I want to propose uh, a simpler idea, and probably better. Uh, one can use uh, a wire made of amorphous material. And amorphous material has very high normal state resistance. And uh, the inductance of a wire is related to the normal state resistance by the Ambiagakar-Baratov relation. Uh, the Ambiagakar-Baratov formula usually applies to Josephson junctions, but by the order of magnitude, it, uh, it's also applicable uh, to wires. So if the normal state resistance uh, is big, then uh, the inductance uh, will be big and uh, basically uh, we need two things. We need uh, that uh, the resistance per square of this wire is large enough and that uh, the aspect ratio is large too. The resistance per square cannot be very large. It's limited uh, by the same quantum unit. Uh, uh, the maximum value one can have is about four kilo ohms. Uh, however, uh, the aspect ratio can be arbitrary large, and uh, it's easy uh, to achieve uh, that uh, the aspect ratio is much greater than this number, which uh, means that uh, the, super, uh, uh, the inductance in the uh, superconducting regime is high enough, and also uh, the ratio of the coherence length and uh, the wire uh, thickness is small enough that is necessary to prevent phase slips uh, in the wire. That is also uh, relatively easy to achieve. Uh, and uh, this is the characteristic uh, length, uh, the coherence length in molybdenum germanium. 
uh, well, let me skip uh, this rather technical part. Uh, it, it contains some estimates of parameters of a circuit. Now, uh, let's consider an adiabatic switch. An adiabatic switch is uh, the simplest device uh, that changes uh, the adjacent current uh, from uh, the two terminals from a, an extremely small value to a sufficiently large value. It, uh, my design of the switch consists of uh, an inductor in series with a squid. A squid is just uh, two adjacent, uh, adjacent junctions in parallel, and uh, one can control the effective adjacent current of the squid by uh, running some magnetic flux through. So uh, the effective uh, parameter J can change. Uh, and uh, one can consider uh, the whole thing uh, as a quantum system uh, with one degree of freedom, uh, this uh, superconducting uh, phase phi in the middle. The effective Hamiltonian is given by this formula. It has uh, kinetic energy due to the inductor. It has uh, Joyson energy, and it also has uh, a Coulomb energy, which is uh, interpreted as kinetic energy in terms of this variable phi. It depends on d over d phi, the momentum. Uh, and we're interested in the ground state energy of this device as a function of theta. Theta is an external parameter. Uh, and uh, the derivative of the energy with respect to theta will determine the current through the device. The current as a function of j changes from an exponentially small value to uh, a sufficiently large value. Well, it's not really large uh, by experimentalist standards, but uh, at least it doesn't have uh, any exponential smallness. Uh, it's interesting that if we use uh, this dimensionless parameter gamma the uh, quantum, uh, the impedance in quantum units, then uh, an exponential, uh, an exponential change occurs uh, in a, in an interval that is only logarithmically wide. So it's kind of doubly exponential effect, which is nice. Now, how do we understand uh, the working of this device? Um, this is uh, the potential energy uh, in, in the previous Hamiltonian. It contains a quadratic potential plus some wiggles. And uh, the wave function will be concentrated in, in a local minima of the potential. There are two regimes. Uh, the first regime where the switch is off is where uh, the quadratic potential uh, is um, well, where the, these, those wiggles are, are not uh, too strong to prevent tunneling from uh, one potential minimum to another. In this case, uh, the system will tunnel between the minima and it, it will uh, spread out over the minima. So, uh, um, no, I'm sorry. Uh, this is uh, the regime where the switch is off. So I I when the switch is off, the wave function uh, spreads out over many minima, meaning that uh, the phase uh, fluctuates strongly. And in the opposite regime, the phase will be locked uh, to one or two minima, uh, which is uh, which means that uh, this phase phi inside the device will be locked to the external phase. And the current will be determined by uh, the inductor only. The quantum fluctuations can be neglected. So again, uh, there is some theory how to calculate uh, that current. It's not so important. Uh, let's consider uh, a more complicated device. It has two inductors, uh, two junctions, and one capacitor in the middle. This capacitor C1 will be greater than uh, the intrinsic, uh, the intrinsic capacitances of the junctions. Uh, again, one can write down the Hamiltonian for the device, and uh, one can uh, use symmetric and anti-symmetric variables to, to characterize the dynamic, uh, the dynamics. Uh, the phases phi 1 and phi 2 can fluctuate together. They can move uh, like this. Or they can uh, uh, move in the opposite directions. 
Now, uh, if we use a large uh, capacitor here, it means that it's uh, very difficult for the two uh, phases move in the opposite directions. This motion is suppressed and uh, the phases tend to uh, move together. Um, uh, now, uh, using this intuition, we can uh, simplify the circuit. Uh, when the phases uh, move together, uh, then uh, this capacitance uh, is irrelevant and we have uh, two inductors in parallel and two junctions in parallel. This is an effective circuit. And if the parameters are right, uh, this circuit is equivalent to a switch uh, that is switched off. Uh, recall that uh, a switch changes from on to off uh, in a sufficiently narrow uh, parameter interval. So, for the symmetric uh, fluctuations of, of the two phases, uh, this circuit is insulating. But when we talk about anti-symmetric fluctuations, uh, there'll be this large capacitor in, uh, involved. And uh, this will correspond uh, to a switch in, in the on state. So this circuit uh, will not carry a symmetric current, but uh, it uh, can carry anti-symmetric current. So the two currents uh, in this arm of this device, in, in, in that arm, uh, must uh, flow in the opposite direction so that, so that to cancel each other. And uh, uh, one can describe the device as an energy function of two variables, phi one and phi two, or more generally of four variables. If we fix uh, uh, the superconducting phases on, uh, on the terminals, the energy will be a function of those superconducting phases. And the condition uh, that uh, the currents are equal and uh, E equal in magnitude and uh, flowing in the opposite directions is given by the condition that the energy depends on this combination uh, of the phases. Theta one minus theta two plus theta three minus theta four. Because uh, the currents are just the derivatives of this function with respect to the corresponding phases. Of course, there will be some error term, but we expect it to be exponentially small. And, uh, uh, the error term is uh, due to the fact that uh, the symmetric current is not completely switched off. Uh, so uh, basically we have uh, a superconducting current mirror or a transformer with one-to-one -one ratio. Actually, uh, if we have uh, several, several transformers like that, we can build uh, transformers with uh, arbitrary ra rational ratio. And uh, they will be completely dissipationless. Uh, I mean, uh, not only the currents will reflect each other, but uh, the voltages will reflect each other uh, in, in, the, uh, in the right uh, proportion. And, uh, uh, it's uh, nice by itself. Uh, not, uh, it's not necessary to use that as a qubit. Uh, I think it's uh, just uh, a, an interesting device by itself. Unfortunately, it cannot be used uh, uh, for power supply for superconducting electronics because the breakdown voltage for such a device is in the microvolt range. But <laughs> that's probably okay. Now, Let's turn uh, uh, that device into a qubit. That is really simple. It's uh, completely elementary. We just cross-connect uh, uh, the, the terminals. Now we equate uh, theta 1 to theta 3 and uh, theta 2 to theta 4. And the energy function is now uh, the same function f of uh, twice uh, the phase difference between theta 1 and theta 2. And uh, the error term is transformed uh, to another function uh, that is uh, periodic with period two pi. This one is periodic with period pi. So again, we have uh, two minima at zero and at pi, where theta is the phase difference. And uh, the energy difference is exponentially small. It, it's defined by this error term. Um, 
course, uh, there are uh, some conditions uh, for this circuit to work, to prevent tunneling from zero to one. Uh, that is to suppress uh, bit flips. We need to satisfy this condition. Uh, this is, uh, this uh, combination of parameters uh, enters the tunneling amplitude. C1 is the, capacitor, uh, the capacitance between uh, uh, the two arms uh, of the interferometer or the transformer. This is C1. And we also assume that there are no phase in, in the inductors. Now, how do we uh, use that qubit? Here is uh, the same circuit, but drawn differently. And uh, this circuit also has uh, some controls. Uh, it has some knobs. Um, each Jacobson junction is replaced by a squid, and um, uh, there is another squid uh, that is attached to a measuring device, and that device uh, can measure either the current or the voltage, depending on uh, what we want to measure in that qubit. The qubit has uh, three basic states. The quiet state, where uh, no measurement is being performed, is this. Uh, J, uh, this, uh, those squids are on and uh, the output is off. If we want to measure the phase, uh, I mean, we want to distinguish zero from one, then we need to measure uh, the current through the device. Uh, we apply some magnetic flux uh, that goes uh, through this loop. Uh, the loop begins at the, uh, at the ground, it goes through the device, uh, through uh, the measure, uh, measuring circuit and uh, to the ground again. And uh, there should be some magnetic flux phi through this loop. And uh, by changing uh, phi, uh, uh, we will change the current. If phi is uh, zero, then the current will be zero. The maximum value is achieved at phi uh, equal to uh, pi over two. That is how a phase measurement uh, is performed. Of course, if there is a catch, uh, the output current is given by uh, this formula, and if we want a high degree of protection, then L, the inductance, must be large. Therefore, the current will be small, and it will be difficult to measure. And uh, in fact, if this uh, number, which is uh, in suitable units, uh, also, the energy uh, or the energy difference between the ground state and an excited state of the device. If this number is uh, smaller than the temperature, then uh, this measurement must be performed fast enough before uh, thermal equilibration occurs. So, one uh, needs to either cool the device down to very low temperatures, uh, below one millikelvin, say. Or one uh, needs to come up with a clever way of measuring so that uh, thermal noise uh, does not disturb uh, the measurement outcome. This thermal noise, uh, thermal noise is not uh, that dangerous in the quiet state. Uh, we can protect from it uh, well enough. Uh, it's most dangerous uh, in, in, in the measurement state. And uh, another measurement uh, one can do on this circuit is this. It's a dual measurement uh, in the plus minus basis. Uh, to perform such a measurement, we uh, turn uh, both things off. I mean, b both uh, JOS and currents. Uh, in the device itself and uh, in the output port. Uh, now, this thing uh, works as a capacitor, and uh, those things also work uh, as capacitors, and uh, what we measure is just uh, the electric charge on uh, these four capacitors uh, connected in parallel. This electric charge must be measured to a fraction of an electron charge, because we don't care what the um, uh, magnitude of the, uh, this uh, charge is. Uh, we want to distinguish between even and old charge. Uh, 
uh, an even uh, charge will correspond to this state and an odd charge will co correspond to that state. So uh, the measurement uh, must be uh, very precise and uh, the voltage generated on the output port by this charge is of the order 1 over C1, where C1 is this capacitor, actually 1 over 2 C1. Uh, this voltage is uh, again very small, it's uh, difficult uh, to perform this measurement. Now, uh, let me describe uh, quantum gates that can be used uh, with this kind of qubit. Actually, uh, the same set of gates would work uh, with the qubit uh, proposed by Dussault, Vidal, Leonfi, and Fegelman. Uh, this is a rather general scheme. Uh, we need to do uh, two measurements, uh, a measurement in the standard basis and a measurement in the dual basis on each qubit. Uh, a third gate uh, that uh, needs to be implemented with high precision is this. Uh, it's a rotation around the z-axis by angle of pi over 2. Uh, and uh, it's a k-gate. Uh, up to an overall phase, its matrix is uh, one zero zero i, and a similar uh, gate uh, can be implemented on two qubits, and we need to implement it uh, with high degree of protection, which is possible using uh, that idea of uh, encoding a qubit into an oscillator, and uh, the last gate is a, rot a rotation by a smaller angle, angle pi over four. But uh, if the, the first three gates are implemented with high precision, the required precision here is uh, relatively low. It's about 30%, uh, and uh, actually it may be as low, uh, as bad as 50%. That, will, uh, that would still work. Uh, how do we implement uh, the measurements? Uh, I have... Uh, uh, told you a little bit about the measurements, here is a, a simple scheme. When we want to distinguish zero from one, we use this device uh, with a JSON junction and uh, with some magnetic flux and we measure the current in this circuit. If we want to distinguish plus and minus, we basically break one of the wires uh, that cross connect uh, the JSON junction. This is a slightly different scheme uh, from what uh, I described before, but uh, in the end it's, uh, it's equivalent. Uh, the qubit in the quiet state has uh, two cross-connecting uh, wires. We break one of the wires and uh, this thing uh, is, is insulating. A net current cannot flow from here to there because uh, this thing is a transformer. It requires that uh, on the opposite corners the currents uh, flow in or both currents flow out, but uh, they cannot f uh, flow I I continuously from one corner to the other corner. Therefore, uh, this uh, scene is equivalent to a capacitor. Uh, a capacitor is characterized by this Hamiltonian. Of course, it, it has some effective capacitance, but it also has uh, an offset charge. Uh, N is the number of Cooper periods on the capacitor, and uh, the energy minimum is achieved not at zero number of Cooper periods, but uh, at some fractional number. Uh, there is some an, uh, fractional number N sub zero that is a property of the capacitor itself, and there is uh, uh, another number alpha, uh, which is different in the plus state and, and minus state. And uh, we need to measure uh, the energy levels of this capacitor uh, and by measuring the energy level we can tell whether alpha is zero or uh, one half. One half uh, means one half of a Cooper pair on, uh, or one unit of electron, uh, electron charge. Uh, and uh, here's how uh, the unprotected gate is implemented. Uh, this device itself uh, creates some phase difference uh, between uh, the two terminals. It can be the zero pi. Uh, if we connect uh, the two terminals through a JSON junction, then uh, uh, some cl uh, classical uh, phase will accumulate because uh, the Hamiltonian, when uh, this switch is uh, connected, uh, is proportional to sigma z. 
the state with uh, zero phase difference and pi phase difference have different energies. And if we connect uh, this device for uh, a certain time interval, we implement uh, the right gate. But uh, the same gate with this exact number, pi over four, can be realized uh, in a protected fashion. Uh, for this purpose, we include uh, an inductor, actually it's an LC circuit, it uh, includes bo uh, both uh, in inductance and capacitance. Uh, we connect this circuit uh, for a certain time interval and uh, uh, some uh, magic uh, happens in, in this circuit. Uh, the Hamiltonian of, of, of this circuit is such that uh, it already implements an error correcting card. Uh, let me show you. Uh, briefly how it works. If we consider uh, a capacitance, a capacitor and an inductor in parallel, and we also have a switch and uh, some magnetic flux here. Uh, in this circuit, we don't need uh, an actual magnetic flux, but uh, that uh, flux phi will represent the internal state of the qubit. If the state uh, is characterized by uh, phase difference pi, across the device. We attribute that phase difference to the flux. That's just uh, for the analysis of this circuit. We, we don't w want uh, to look into the internals of that part. We represent it by uh, a single variable phi. Phi is either zero, corresponding to state zero, or in the state one, phi equals to pi. Uh, phi is equal to pi. Now, Uh, sure. Uh, okay. So, uh, uh, it's possible to implement uh, an all-electric uh, quantum circuit uh, or all-electric quantum qubits. It, it, it's uh, fun for theorists, but experimentally, um, there are a lot of problems, and I, I would propose that uh, experimentalists uh, implement uh, some more basic idea that are even more basic than a qubit, like a switch or a quantum transformer. Uh, to me, it sounds interesting by itself. Okay, thank you. I, I do have to do it adiabatically. And uh, there is a, a certain requirement that it should not be fast enough because it's fast, it will create uh, unwanted oscillations in the circuit. One more very quick question. How do you couple the qubits? How do you couple the qubits? How do I couple a qubit? Uh, through the same kind of switch. You couple the phase or? Yes, yes. Uh, by, uh, by wire, we couple the uh, superconducting phase. Uh, 